Hey, you new YouTube's Welcome Middle Development. It's my 458th weekly update. I have just been recovering this whole week. Uh, this last week of my life was just as I expected, an absolute... Well, honestly, it was just a lot of hurry up and wait, if I'm being real. Um, drove down, or up, geez, drove up to West Virginia on Tuesday with a really funny story that I'll just keep to myself for now. Uh, worked Wednesday from about 7.40 until I think I ended up walking out of that building around 6.40ish. No, it had to be later. It had to be around 7 or 8 because I remember going to dinner with everybody and I didn't get back to the Airbnb until 11, 10 ish. Something along those lines. And then uh, Thursday, similar story. Got there around 7 30, 7 45 to the arena. Got right to work. And didn't leave the arena until almost. Boy, I can't even I can't even remember. I remember I remember laying down finally around ten ish that night. So another twelve hour day, give or take. Friday, I woke up early enough to get there around seven whatever. And I uh, just decided I just didn't want to do it. I just didn't want to get there that early. Nobody needed me. Um all of Thursday was just spent finishing up the last uh, seven stones that I hadn't gotten to while I was up in North Carolina. Um, just in case anybody's curious, it takes about 45 minutes to clean up one of those stones. So, you know, 45 minutes in the tent, cleaning up one stone, roll it back in the box, start on the next one, that sort of deal. Now, I didn't work straight through, you know, I took lots of breaks which I highly recommend, especially if you're, you know, doing work that's just tough, which just bent over working on those stones. It gets to you after a while, honestly. And um, so, yeah, just did that all of Thursday, Friday. Said I'm just not showing up early again. Nobody needs me. I think I walked in the door and then it actually ended up like saving the day a little bit for one of the other uh, one of the other makers there, so that was awesome. And then the rest of Friday was just kind of floating around, seeing if anybody needed me for anything. Saturday, uh, I got there super early to one of the comments I got last year about the stones was that they were too slick. So I said, you know what I can do? I can toss a coat of wet tacky on the stones and they probably won't be dry by tomorrow just in that particular environment um and i was right they, they ended up staying for lack of a better word tacky uh going into sunday so that was great um but got that knocked out first thing saturday morning and then ended up helping a bunch in uh in <laughs> event two for saturday like, a lot more than I planned for it. I ended up being the guy carting the packs uh, back and forth. Literally carting them back and forth. So that was a lot more labor-intensive than I was expecting. Um, but I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I was there. I'm glad I could help. And then Sunday, uh, most of the people, the volunteers and everybody that were there understood that hey, I'm not going to get involved in helping with the first event. There's really no need for me to anyway. Uh, I am just going to be sitting here trying not to throw up uh, before event two, which was my stones, starts. And I set up a station for tacky application and removal and basically built a false floor and debuted a product, a new product, that's going to be hitting the website next week. Um, planned on launching it today, but it just, materials came in too late, couldn't get the pictures I needed, so 
So I was like, ah, you know what? Let's just launch it on Monday. I can have everything on the site the way I want it. And, uh, and I can have the weekend to get everything put together to uh, get, get more than just four packs made up. Um, so yeah, that'll be, that'll be fun to launch that on Monday, but yeah, I launched a, uh, essentially it is a tacky removal wipe or towel, whichever you want to call it. I've officially branded it as a wipe, but it is technically a towel, uh, debuted it there because the best place to test a new product is, uh, you know, at the world games and got nothing but positive feedback from all 100 12, 13, 14 athletes that used it. Um, they were absolutely ecstatic about the idea. And uh, essentially what I'm selling is a single-use towel, although it is a reusable towel, that is soaked in the liquid from the Lucky Number 7, which I sell, which is the best tacky removal product on the market, period. It outperforms WD-40, baby oil, any other you know, product you can name, this just blows it out of the water and actually cleans you up after using Tacky, which most products claim, uh, but mine actually does. And so it's just the liquid from that product soaked into a towel. Uh, it's a very high quality, I think it's 10 by 12 or, yeah, 10 by 12 inch uh, woven cotton towel or a terry cloth sometimes commonly referred to and uh it you know i used it once at a show a few months ago tried it out there and i said cool this worked really well i'm gonna try to use this uh for the tacky removal at osg and it just worked phenomenally well just nothing nothing beat it just period it was just awesome and so now i'm going to be launching that product on the site next week um but that, that's always a great experience. I'm so glad I was trusted with that um, responsibility to just handle that whole section. Uh, I remember telling the organizer of that show, Lynn, if you just leave these two things up to me, I will make it look like we were never here when it's over. And I'm happy to report that's exactly how it went. Uh, even learned a few new things, too, that I'll do even better next year. And... Well, that's all there is to it. You know, it was, it was, it was, it was just awesome to be a part of, on so many different levels. <laughs> you know, I do kind of miss being able to watch my stones get used, but it's, uh, you know, duty calls. You know, I, I, I'd rather get the one-on-one -on -one experience with the athletes that I get, uh, in the back taking care of that station, rather than just watching it, um, watching my stuff get used. It's a, it's, a, it's a more rewarding experience that way, getting that one-on-one -on -one interaction with so many, so many amazing athletes. And so overall, the week was awesome. Um, that, that whole Tuesday to Monday. Now, Sunday, I was up at about 6. I just woke up on my own, just up. And uh, had to drive home because the rental had to be back on Monday at 12. And it's about a 12 hour drive, which really turns into about 14. Uh, it just is what it is. And so about 8.30, I was at the after party for a few minutes and I was just like, I gotta go, I can't stay. If I stay any longer, I'm gonna lose my energy. I just gotta go. And so I just drove home from there. Uh, <clears throat> I think it took me about 13 hours, give or take. You, know, you gotta stop for gas and stuff and stop for pee, that sort of thing. And, uh, had the rental returned by 11.15-ish, because I couldn't find a stupid vacuum in my town that worked <laughs> for the first four gas stations I went to, which I have, I have a, a, a shop vac, I should just, I should really just use that, save me two dollars, and some heartache and stress from trying to rush to get it done because I've only got like two and a half, four minutes, whatever it is they give you on those little timers. And before anybody mentions it, the Wawa that's near me that has free vacuum and air uh, is so far away that I worry driving back, I might, like, the, the tank won't look full and they will charge you like $9 a gallon to refill those tanks. <clears throat> So, 
got that done. And, uh, yeah, I was, I ended up being up for about, uh, 30, 30 ish hours, about 32 hours. So Tuesday was a wash, uh, just kind of got up whenever I got up and puddled around, shipped some orders that had been put in. And then, uh, Wednesday I'm normally off and I was like, we're just going to keep rolling that, keep that energy. Uh, I had stuff to do when I came home as well. I had to replace an oil sensor on the truck and then I rode, I want to say Wednesday night. That sounds right. Wednesday night I went out for a ride and, uh, my rectifier went out on the bike, which probably one of the few times I've been not proud because I'm usually proud to, to have a carburetor bike. It's just kind of a cool thing because I enjoy working on that kind of stuff. But I was actually super happy. Usually I'm not happy to have a carbureted bike. They're very cantankerous to changes in weather, whatever kind of gas you put in it, you name it, they, they can be very cantankerous. Um, but um, with that rectifier going out, that meant I had no starter. And eventually the battery would run so low I wouldn't have a fuel pump. Uh, which this bike does have a fuel pump, but as long as you have, like, I think it's at least a quarter tank or more, the weight of the fuel just pushes into the carb, so you're fine. If I had a fuel-injected bike, I would have just been dead on the water. I wouldn't have even been able to push start it like I was able to push start mine. Uh, so that was just one more thing to work on. Luckily, that came in just this morning, so I got that sorted out. That's working again. I had to go to a shop to get the oil pressure sensor because the one that came in was wrong, so I have to return that now too, but I got that sorted. Battery on the truck seems to be doing just fine now too. Um, we'll, we'll see about the oil pressure sensor slash sender, whatever, switch, whatever they called it. Uh, we'll see how that holds up. It looked like the same exact part, so hopefully that's fixed. Which is not a big deal. Like I'm like, I know I have oil. I can just pull over and check, and yes, I have oil, you know. Uh, it's just that it beeps when it drops, and then it goes back up and drops, and it's just like, oh, it's just annoying. It's just a quality of life challenge, uh, worth the thirty dollars just to stop the beeping. I, I thought about just shorting it out and putting like a resistor on the plug or something, and just plugging the hole in the block with like a, a brass fitting or something, and just be done with it, you know. But I was like, ah, I'll just replace the part, you know. That this truck doesn't, it doesn't cost me too many expensive things throughout the year so I'll, I'll i'll do the right thing right and replace the part so and then uh today i was just like waiting and waiting for all those parts as well as the materials to launch that that wipe slash towel and uh it just you know once that stuff came in i immediately started working and uh, getting a, a few made up so I could take pictures and all that. And had all intentions of getting it on the site. And it was just like, man, it's all of a sudden it's like 8.30, 8.40. And I'm like, I can't guarantee myself I'm going to get this done. I don't want to do it under a crunch like this. There's really no reason to. So, yeah, I have not trained in uh, about two weeks, give or take. Something along those lines. Um, and I'm very excited to get back in the gym on Monday. For at least two weeks. Then I'm going on a little mini vacation. I should still be able to get some training done the week of that, that trip and the week after. So I'm, I'm very much so looking forward to getting back to a, a more consistent schedule of training. I think I've been out of the gym long enough that I started to miss it again. And uh, the great news is, you know, volunteering at OSG, it's like volunteering at any show. Um, you get You get your steps in. You get... Things start hurting that you didn't realize you don't train enough, um, <laughs> you know, and things like that. So I don't feel necessarily too weak, but I definitely know I've, I've probably lost a bit of a step just from the time off. So I'm, I'm very much so looking forward to getting back to it. But, uh, you know, the whole trip was a lot of hurry up and wait and then a lot of, you know, anxiety and then relief and then laughter and, and I'm this year went a lot better for me than last year did, so I'm very happy. A lot more positive reactions to not just me, but to the things that I made and the things that I provided. So that felt really, really good. And so, you know, if you're ever lucky enough to get a second chance, don't squander it, don't waste it. Make the most of it. 
which is what I did. If you do, then what's your excuse?